Welcome back. I'm speaking with Katrina Principe. She's just back from Portugal. She's a social activist from there, and she's an organizer with Left Bloc in Portugal and De Linke in Germany, which means the left. She's written for Jacobin magazine and contributed to an anthology titled Portugal 40 Years After the Revolution. Thank you so much for joining me again. So in the first segment, we were actually um, discussing the crisis that uh, Portugal is in at this moment in terms of its leadership and its, in terms of its parliament. And we were specifically talking about the president and the fact that mm -hmm. he was not uh, uh, willing to appoint a coalition socialist uh, left alliance to parliament, and instead he chose the leader of his own party. So why is he doing this? Well, I think um, I think in order to understand uh, precisely what is happening in Portugal, we need to understand what has been the role of the Socialist Party and uh, and in in which situation they find themselves at the moment. So it's important to go back to 2011 when Portugal signed the memorandum to the agreement with the Troika. The Troika are the three institutions that applied cuts and austerity in Portugal. So the European Central Bank, the European Commission, and the IMF, the, the International Monetary Fund. And this, this agreement that threw Portugal into the uh, harshest impoverishing process in the 40 in its 40 years of its democratic or demo, uh, democracy um, was signed both by the two right-wing parties that constituted government right now but also by the socialist party so um, until now the socialist party what was not um, criticizing any of the austerity implementation uh, processes or politics in portugal um, and uh, but right now, because so the, the Socialist Party finds itself in a very particular situation, they are between a rock and a hard wall, so to say, um, because on the one hand, they know that if they support a right wing government, they will lose their political space within the Portuguese political scenario. And at the same time, they know that if they reach out to the left, there will be very concrete programmatical questions that they will have to change in order to find an agreement with the left. Because until now, they have not um, backed down from what they um, signed and what their compromises with all the European and international institutions were. So they need to make a decision. And I think what is happening with the president of the republic is he's trying to force the Socialist Party into making a very clear decision whether they're going to back the right or whether they're going to try to build a government with the left. The problem is both the left bloc and the Communist Party are Eurocritical uh, parties. So we denounce uh, our the, the, the belonging of Portugal to NATO. We both say we don't want Portugal to belong to NATO. We uh, want to end the Lisbon Treaty, the, the European Fiscal Compact, the Growth and uh, Stability Pact. So we want to question all of this. And we also, during, our, during the electoral campaign, there was a political space that opened in Portugal for a more Eurocritical left. So let me just bring Greece into the discussion. Um, uh, when the third memorandum was signed by the Syriza government, the, the mainstream idea was that no Eurocritical or EU critical left wing party could win or gain any political terrain if they would voice their disagreements with what the European project is today. Portugal proved the contrary, and this is very important because it is an opening of a political space. So although the left has been clearly critical to everything that Europe has been doing, especially to the periphery, to the southern European countries, um, still the left managed to grow and assert itself in a certain way on parliament uh, and, uh, and have a stronger social basis of support. So um, what, what the, pre the president of the republic is doing is to say that um, 
because we had a financial crisis and because we were so dependent on European uh, institutions in order to have uh, 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 any sort of uh, financial aid uh, to pay for the debt that we own that we're actually not paying because the debt is only growing and that's exactly the problem of austerity, but that's maybe another discussion. Um, because we've been going through this process to appoint a, a prime minister from a party so the Socialist Party, who is willing to negotiate to its left with Eurocritical perspectives, would mean to put Portugal in a very dangerous position that the European institution and the European elites would not like and approve. So what he's saying is actually is that democracy and sovereignty in Europe does not matter anymore. This is why there has been a public campaign on Twitter or on Facebook saying that what is happening in Portugal is a political coup. Because it's saying uh, we, um, our democratic processes are le less important than the wills and the impositions of the European institutions. So, Katrina, so, what, what is the left doing about all of this? Uh, there is, of course, a Twitter campaign going on, as you said, but what is the organized left doing there? Um, first of all, we are trying to negotiate a clear and very... We, we know that the Socialist Party signed the austerity agreements. So we know that we also have to go... Uh, we have to negotiate with them, but we have to be very careful about it. We cannot give them a uh, full, uh, unlimited path to say and to apply whatever they want. We have to be very clear on what we're going, we, what we are negotiating, and what sort of measures we will be approving and not. So, first of all, for the last two weeks, both the left bloc and the Communist Party have been having several weekly meetings with the leadership of the Socialist Party trying to set up a clear agreement on what measures should the state budget for 2016 comply and we would vote in favor for it. So this is one thing that we've been very clearly doing, which is a very important process. The second thing is now that Parliament has already started, um, we have so the left, the center and the left on parliament, so the Socialist Party, the, the left bloc and the Communist Party, we voted together for the president of the parliament, which is the second most important political figure in Portugal. So the, the, the candidate that was appointed by the left won against the candidate that was appointed by the right, which is actually the government right now. So this was the first big loss of this right-wing government. And thirdly, there, there are some uh, public, um, smaller but still public demonstrations happening on the street. There hasn't been any very strong social mobilization right now yet, because next week, the government of the right that the president just appointed two or three days ago will have to go to votes on parliament. And we know that if nothing changes, because things are also changing every day, and very fast, that this government will not be voted in favor of. So the, in one week, Portugal will be without a government again. And, and then a new moment starts. And what e happens in that moment? E there's two choices. Either the president of the republic decides he will allow the Socialist Party and Antonio Costa, who's... Uh, um, um, declarations we just heard, either he will allow him to become the prime minister and try to form a government with the left, or he will have to nominate a caretaker government, which means a technocratic, undemocratic government uh, that actually cannot uh, uh, change anything from uh, for um, any fiscal policies, anything, any economic policies. And how policies long do they, do they last until the government... It, uh, the has... next elections can only be in March, because no parliament in Portugal, according to our constitution, can be dissolved within the first six months of its functioning unless the president of the republic dissolves it. But because the president of the republic cannot dissolve a government within 
his six months of mandate, and we have presidential elections in January, he can also not dissolve the parliament. So right now, the, the, the only two choices that he has left is uh, either he appoints the Socialist Party as the leading party to form a government, uh, and then the process starts of uh, a negotiation and agreement with the left that has then to go to parliament and be voted in favor. And this would most possibly happen if uh, we, the left manages to reach an agreement with the Socialist Party, because together the three parties gather more than 50 percent. And how likely is that? Um, it is likely um, if uh, we both the three parts uh, that or the three parts that are engaging in this negotiations keep their um, negotiation promises, so to say. Uh, so as for us, we are very clear on what we are saying to the Socialist Party. We are saying that we will not accept any uh, flexibilization of um, uh, firing, uh, um, not unemployment, um, Sorry, I've, I'm, I'm missing the word. We will not accept any flexibilization of the labor market anymore, which means that the bosses can fire their workers easily. Mm -hmm. We will not accept to cut down uh, taxation on employers, and we will not. Ex and we, we we are fighting for both uh, to unfreeze the pensions and to uh, give back to. Uh, the public sector workers, their wages that have been cut in the last four years. These are our four basic measures, and we're very clear on them. These are the sort of our red lines. These are the lines that we want the Socialist Party to agree on. These are basically also the lines of the Communist Party. So if the Socialist Party is willing to actually form a government that has some sort of social interest that is willing to reboost economy, protect the weakest links in society, keep a security system, a social security system that is based on values of intergenerational solidarity, stop the attack on labor rights that has been going on in the country for the last four years, then we are willing to allow a government of the Socialist Party. If they are not willing to do this, so if they're not actually willing to apply anti-austerity measures, then we cannot uh, allow a government that will just apply austerity, because then there is no more difference between the right-wing government and the socialist party-led government. Just to remind everybody, Katrina is referring to the left bloc in Portugal when she's talking about uh, we and negotiating Sorry, with the Socialist true. Party. Yes. Uh, quite all right, just a reminder. But Katrina, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank and you for um, me. lots of our members have been asking about whether how we are going to cover Portugal, and I hope to uh, uh, continue our, our dialogue in the near future. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.